So how did I turn this into this? Today I'm gonna go over how I transformed my 12 foot by 14 foot apartment bedroom into a studio that I charted top 40 on Billboard out of. I wanna talk about how I actually made this a usable studio that was capable of me getting that result of, of working on music that successful. And then I wanna talk about like acoustic panels, how I hung them, like the logistics of like what it actually was like to get that studio turned into that. And the challenges, soundproofing, noise from neighbors, like air conditioning, like how I dealt with all of these problems. So I think literally anyone who works on music out of their home or out of their apartment will get something from this and it might help you figure out some ways on how to work around some problems you have. Now I do have to say that I always get questions on videos like this and I love the questions. I love that you guys drop comments and that you guys ask questions and I love helping uh, anyone out that I can. It's literally what this channel is about. However, most of the questions that I get on these videos I've actually covered the answer to those questions in the video. So make sure, if you guys have any questions, make sure you actually watch from beginning to end. And then if you still have questions, please drop them below and I will get to as many questions as I possibly can. So before I moved here to Nashville, I had a commercial studio right downtown Peoria, Illinois, where I'm from. And uh, I had been working in music for 13 years. I've been producing and mixing for 13 years before I moved here to Nashville. However, when we first moved to Nashville, I wasn't willing to like get into a big commercial studio first coming into town until I like got my feet under me and, and had some things going. And w for this exact same reason, we also weren't willing to buy a house when we first moved here because I just I had no idea if I was going to move here and get eaten alive or if things were going to go great or if I was going to get completely destroyed and move back home. So I felt like it was just a terrible financial decision to do either to buy a house or get into a big commercial space. So what that means is I knew we were going to land in an apartment. So like I said, I had already been producing and mixing for about 13 years. So my first goal when moving into an apartment was to create a space that was sonically fantastic, or at least as good as I could possibly make it within an apartment bedroom. I needed a room that was capable of me working at a very high level. So obviously this means acoustic treatment, but it wasn't just about treating the room, it was how do I actually treat this room in a very high-end way that doesn't like permanently destroy the apartment. Because one day I've got to move out of this apartment and I, I don't want to lose my deposit if at all possible, but I also don't want to have to refinish this apartment or pay for them to completely gut and remodel this apartment because I destroyed the drywall hanging acoustic panels and hanging ceiling clouds. So I came up with a way to build my acoustic panels out of metal studs and a lath board put together to a frame that I stretched fabric over that then got screwed to a metal stud frame. Now I'll put some links in the description of this video uh, where you can go check out in more detail the actual construction of these acoustic panels that I used. But the key here is that these panels were super lightweight. They weighed almost nothing and what this means is that my mounting solution, how I hung my panels on the wall and how I hung my ceiling cloud could be very simple and non-destructive. So since I was able to make those acoustic panels so light, this is actually what I used to hang them. These are just drywall hooks. Hopefully you can actually see these here. Basically all these do is you just push them through the drywall and then they curve up inside the wall and leave you with this little hook right here that you can hang stuff on. These are super cheap. You can buy them at Lowe's or Home Depot and uh, they'll support about 40 pounds per hook. Now these panels that I made weighed far less than 40 pounds for an entire panel. So when I take two of these and hang them and then was able to just hang the panel right on these, uh, it worked out awesome. And all the more damage that I did on the drywall was just tiny, tiny little holes here. No different from hanging picture frames. Now the ceiling cloud got a little bit more tricky because my ceiling cloud in that apartment bedroom was uh, four foot by eight foot. And it did weigh probably 60 pounds, maybe about 60 pounds. So still very, very, very lightweight for a, for a big ceiling cloud that was really effective. But it was hanging from the ceiling so I couldn't just use like regular plastic drywall anchors. I had to come up with a little bit better solution. So what I came up with was just a little bit heavier duty type of drywall anchor. So these right here, all, all you have to do is drill a hole big enough for that to fit in right there. So it's, you know, maybe a quarter inch hole in the ceiling and then you would put these up, let's see if I can get this camera to focus on this, 
and then you would push these through the drywall and they pop open on the top side and hang from the other side of the drywall just like this. And so I put some hooks on the end of these and uh, just drilled little quarter inch holes in the ceiling and used these anchors. And these are also good for about 40 pounds per anchor. So four of them in the ceiling meant that theoretically I could hang 120 pound ceiling cloud from an apartment bedroom with four tiny, tiny little holes uh, that I wouldn't get fined for. And so since my ceiling cloud only weighed about half the capacity of these, that worked out really well. So the one of the biggest keys to getting this room set up right was the acoustic treatment, obviously, because the room had to sound fantastic in order for me to do very high quality work, but it was getting it set up in a way that didn't just destroy the apartment. So the construction of the of this acoustic panels and of the ceiling cloud being very, very lightweight uh, allowed for these very simple mounting solutions and that was awesome. It was literally perfect. It, I, it couldn't have worked out any better. Again, when you're done watching this video, check the link in the description so you can see like more in detail how I actually built these panels. So basically what I did was I just made enough panels to basically cover every square inch of the walls in the room. And I wanted the room as dead as humanly possible. To me, uh, the smaller the room, this is only a 12 by 14 foot room, the smaller the room, the just the more dead you want it. You just want to get rid of all the reflections altogether because the smaller the room, the more inherent problems the room has sonically. And so the more you can just mitigate that by just deadening it completely up, in my opinion, is the way to go. Now, this did very little to actually soundproof the room. Acoustic treatment is not soundproofing. So deadening, deadening the reflections inside of a room does very, very little in controlling this transmission of sound from inside the room to outside the room or the things that are happening outside the room, that sound coming into the room. It just made the room sound good on the inside. Now, unfortunately, there wasn't really anything I could do in an apartment to actually soundproof because there's no, I didn't wanna actually be destructive in any way to the apartment. Now, luckily, this particular apartment had no neighbors surrounding us. We were on the ground floor on a concrete pad, which was best case scenario, and there were no neighbors neighbors 360 degrees around us, but we did have an upstairs neighbor. Now, when we first moved in, our upstairs neighbor was actually an artist and singer-songwriter, Cody Webb, who went on to write songs with Luke Combs and is pretty successful within the music industry himself. And if that isn't like the most Nashville thing you've ever heard, I, I mean, that's literally the story of Nashville is you're just surrounded by artists, surrounded by musicians, and there's a billion apartment studios and home studios in Nashville. But anyway, back to the soundproofing issue. Now, I typically work pretty quietly all day, every day. Honestly, like as loud as you watch TV is probably louder than I work all day. And so the loudest thing that ever happened in the room was someone singing or when I was working with a metal band, someone screaming within the room. I'm sure my neighbors thought that was hilarious. But Beans is a singer, just singing was kind of the loudest thing in the room. I never got any noise complaints. Regardless of who actually ended up living above me, which we had several neighbors over the years, uh, I never got any noise complaints because I was always very conscious about that. And also it was my full-time job. So my hours really were like 8 a.m. to 7 or 8 p.m. and I very, very rarely would work late in the night or early in the morning. And if I was working very late at night, it was at a very low volume. Like when I mix again, it's a very, very quiet volume. Uh, and so it just never became an issue for the neighbors. However, sound coming in the studio from outside that's a different story. They used to actually mow every Tuesday morning, late morning or afternoon. And so there were several hours every single Tuesday that I absolutely could not work. And so I would avoid booking actual sessions during that kind of window of time. And then if it rained on Tuesday, they would, they would mow on Wednesday. And so there was always this kind of weird game of roulette trying to figure out when they were gonna mow, what the weather was like, and trying to book sessions around them mowing. So that way I didn't have a client in doing some soft finger picking acoustic and there's a mower outside. <laughs> <laughs> that was just, that obviously wouldn't work. The other major issue in terms of sound was the air conditioning in the apartment. You know, obviously they put the very cheapest air conditioning units possible in apartments. And so it was very loud. It was not a quiet system at all. And the air conditioning unit was actually in a closet right outside of, this, of the bedroom that housed my studio. And so 
what this means is the air conditioning pretty much ran year round. All that gear in that tiny little room created an enormous amount of heat, and especially if there were multiple people in there, if there was a singer in there and myself uh, for several hours, that room would commonly get to 85 degrees like all the time. And so I had to shut all the vents in all the rest of the apartment and just cr blast the air into my room. And I would shut it off when I was actually tracking vocals or acoustic guitar or something. And then I would turn it back on and let it crack crank and rip into that room and the air conditioning was a real struggle keeping that room like t a tolerable temperature <laughs> while actually working on stuff. Now in terms of tracking electric guitars, any of you that have been following the channel for any length of time, you've seen my ISOCAB videos. That ISOCAB, I'll link that in the description below as well, that ISOCAB was specifically built because I knew I would land in an apartment when I first moved to Nashville. And so this ISOCAB is very, very quiet and this is how I've gotten around tracking electric guitars from an apartment. So the worst parts about that studio were just that it was extremely cramped, like myself and two other people in the studio was very, very cramped with all the gear in there. And so I just, I had to try to avoid uh, multiple people being in there at a time and, and I would just try to schedule it that way and that was a major drawback to being in an apartment bedroom. One of the other big drawbacks was you had to walk through my living room and through my kitchen to actually get to that bedroom in the apartment. And so uh, there's a couple problems with this that I faced. The first problem is obviously I try to provide the most professional high-end experience overall to my clients as possible. Um, and it's very important to me that my clients have a good experience working with me and that it feels like a professional environment. And so even within that apartment bedroom, you know, this meant that like I would have to clean the apartment top to bottom before every single session. And now the other problem with this was kind of the status limits that I would bump up against within an apartment. Now I have, was very fortunate to work on quite a bit of successful music before moving to Nashville and when I first moved to Nashville from that apartment studio. But there was always this status limit, like, like, let's be real extreme for a minute, like Miley Cyrus or Bruno Mars, they're not gonna come to my apartment bedroom to record. That's just not a thing that's gonna happen. And so I was always conscious of like the status of an artist, of a client that I was working with or negotiating and talking with, and I would build into the budget if a client's status was kinda above what I thought was appropriate to have them into my apartment bedroom. Then I would have to go rent a commercial studio for the day or for the week or for however long, so that way we could go to a, a real big professional studio and work on their projects there. Now obviously there wasn't any status limits when it came to mixing. Uh, and so I very commonly would mix for enormously successful clients in that apartment bedroom. And honestly, most people that ever booked a session with me, most clients, they never had any idea that that studio was in an apartment bedroom because of how it looked. It looked like a pro studio which is one of the most important things to me, and this is something that I really wanna impress upon you guys that are working out of your home, that this is a massive part of why this worked for me and why I was able to be successful within an apartment bedroom was as shallow as it sounds, partially because of how it looked. When people looked at pictures of that studio, I'll throw it back up on the screen here, almost no one had any idea that was in an apartment. And so I just kind of didn't really talk about it. And then when someone like we would negotiate, I would negotiate with a client, they obviously had heard previous work of mine. And so between my previous work and my previous accomplishments and the photos of the studio, those two things made it easy to sell clients. And they just, they wouldn't even question it. And so I just kind of wouldn't talk about it. And then we would book the session, I'd send them the address, and then when they showed up, obviously it was in an apartment. But uh, this is one of the reasons why I was so particular about the way the studio looked. Now, I'm not saying that like the colors were the best colors and all that stuff. What I'm saying is it had to look like a pro studio, even though it was in an apartment. I wanted no one to question it whatsoever. And so, like I said, that's one of the things that I want to get across in this video is your presentation of your creative space is ultra important in terms of people taking you seriously and hiring you. It, it really is actually important. So uh, my wife was an absolute 
angel throughout this process. Now, obviously we chose Nashville to move to because of my music career. She could have moved anywhere. She was a graphic designer. She could have moved to any decently sized city in the country and probably been just fine. However, we chose Nashville because of my music career. And so she spent countless hours sitting in our bedroom being perfectly silent, maybe with headphones on, watching a movie on her laptop or whatever. She spent countless hours sacrificing uh, so that way I could have clients over and so I could make music and so I could get my feet under me and so I could continue following this career path of mine that I had been on for so long. It would have been nearly impossible to accomplish what I accomplished in that room without her support and without her cooperation, without her understanding and without her playing along and, and being quiet or being a good host to those clients that were walking through our apartment living room and through our apartment kitchen, you know, maybe every once in a while at 9 p.m. when she really just would have rather been sitting on the couch watching TV and that wasn't an option because I had clients coming in. So my wife probably won't see this, but Amanda, if you see this, thank you. I'm, I'm pretty much only here because of you. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell next to the subscribe tab and give me a thumbs up and drop me a comment. If you've made it this far and you still have questions, please drop me a comment. Don't forget to check the links in the description and thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Peace. So I know a bunch of you were interested in seeing what this room looked like after it was tore down. So uh, this is it. This is the room. It's kind of crazy to think about how much stuff was packed in this room. So uh, I would always take the photo from right here in the closet and that's how I would get the room to look bigger than it was. So that's it, all the acoustic panels are done, everything's moved, I just had to come back and vacuum and clean up before Turn in the keys. So let this be a reminder to any of you that are watching not to ever let your physical location, your situation keep you from getting started. Because here I am finishing up cleaning out my apartment bedroom that I charted on Billboard with and I had multiple number ones in. It's a bedroom in an apartment. It's crazy to me, honestly. Don't ever let where you're at or the gear that you have hold you back. That's the real lesson to be learned from this. Don't ever let anything hold you back. Just start right now with whatever it is that you have. Just, just start right now.